With Cinema 4D S24, Maxon introduced the Asset Browser. It's basically a turbocharged version of the Connor Browser. The plan with this video is to give you some quick tips and info on how to best work with it so you can immediately start using it in your work. Let's go! First things first, let's clarify the type of deliverable we get with the Asset Browser. I think it's important to understand how things work internally, so definitely don't skip this step. All of the assets added into the browser, Cinema 4D files, textures, sound files, whatever they may be, are collected into one database. The Asset Browser database is basically a folder that not only stores the assets, but other important information as well, like the version of the asset, an index of all the files in the database, and other things the database needs in order to function. We don't have to mess with this folder at all, it's just good to know how each library is made. Once that database is created, it's automatically mounted and ready to use. We can enable and control the visibility of the database in two different places. The first place is in the Preferences window, where we can completely enable or disable databases. If we disable a database, it will completely disappear from the Asset Browser window and from this filter window here. The filter window is the second place where we can enable or disable our database, but not in the same way as in Preferences. The filter view is very handy when we want a cleaner list and just want to concentrate on one or more databases at a time but the database is still active and we can add assets to it. The only place where we completely get rid of a database is in the Preferences window, either by disabling it or by completely removing it from the list. Now, as far as mounting a database, that can happen in both the Filter view and the Preferences. If you add a database from the Filter menu, it'll be added into the Preferences and the other way around. It's the same thing, so it doesn't really matter where the loading happens. But how do we go about creating a database? We just need to go to the filter menu here and right click. And that's where the create database command is. Let's first create a folder. I'm gonna call it my database and this is where all the files will end up. And that's all that's needed. If we go into that folder on the desktop, you will see that Cinema already added some files in there. These are needed for the database to work properly. But other than that, it's empty. It doesn't have any assets in it. Let's start adding some objects to our database. I'll first create a folder to group all of my objects. So in the list view, right click and create new category. In the pop-up that comes up, we can name the folder and we can also choose where we want that folder to be saved. Let's choose our own database. Now that we have that, all we need to do is to just drag and drop our objects into the Asset Browser window. The fields for the database and the folder are already pre-populated in the pop-up that comes up, so we can just hit OK and we're all set. Now here's an important tip. Keep your databases self-contained. It's not really a necessity and there are cases where you would like to work differently, but I personally like to work that way because it saves me from a lot of trouble in the future especially when sharing databases with others. So have all folders, keywords, objects, materials, and anything else you might need contained into this one database. Let me explain why. The Asset Browser allows us to have objects from one database into folders of another database, which is cool because we can categorize things the way we want to. But as you can imagine, it can lead to problems as well. Let's start with two databases and let's disable all the other ones so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. Here we have database 1 and database 2. Database 1 contains one folder and two objects, the cube and the pyramid. Database 2 has an uncategorized folder that is automatically created when we have loose items in the database, and two objects, the landscape and the sphere. Since these are also objects, it makes sense to group them with the other objects, so let's add the landscape and the sphere into the objects folder. Perfect. Now everything is nicely organized, but this is where we can run into trouble. Our objects are still in two different databases. If I bring up this details tab here, you will notice that the cube and pyramid belong into database 1 and landscape and sphere into database 2. So if for example I want to share these objects with a colleague and just send them database 1, they will only get half the objects. 
Let's emulate that by disabling database 2 in the preferences. As you can see, they will only get the cube and the pyramid. The same applies for anything else in a database. Folders, keywords, textures, and anything else you can imagine. For example, if we create a folder in database 2 and add some objects from database 1, if we share database 1, then the folder won't transfer along with the database. So we either need to share all databases or work in a manner where everything is encapsulated into one database. So how do we go about moving things around? We just need to select the objects we want to move and then right click and select the move to database command. In the pop-up, select database 1 and now the objects are moved into that database. But let's double check. If we select all objects and check the info tab, it looks like we're good. All of them are in database 1. And just to be absolutely certain, if we disable database 2 in the preferences, our objects are still there. So now we can safely share this one database with others. Perfect. Now let's move on to another handy little tip. To avoid getting the pop-up where we have to choose the location of where the asset will live, we can use our shortcut instead. And that's the control key. So let's say we want to add a couple of keywords. Without the control key, we will have to go through the pop-up selection every time we input a keyword. But if we hold down the control key as we hit enter, the pop-up won't show up. By using the control key, the keyword is added automatically to whatever database the object belongs to. Let's double check. If we go to the keywords category and look for a keyword and check the location, we can confirm that the keyword is indeed in database 1. We can use the control key shortcut for any other addition, not just keywords. Let's add this figure, for example, in our database. Dragging it in will give us the pop-up, but if we hold down control and drag onto the category list, we won't get the pop-up and the object will be added automatically into the database the folder is in. Definitely a big time saver. Now let's talk about another huge time saver, and that's previews. We can add a preview to an asset the regular way by choosing an image from the hard drive and assigning that image to the asset. But we can also do it another way. Once we render our thumbnail in the picture viewer, we can just copy and then paste it to the asset preview area. Animated thumbnails are also easier to deal with. We can just load an animation from the hard drive and Cinema will prepare a file suitable for the asset. We don't need to prepare a special format or anything of that kind. Cinema handles everything, and once it's done processing, it will show up in the thumbnail view. Another super handy feature with the new Asset Browser is automatic texture path handling. Without exaggeration, this is a huge feature. We no longer have to worry about texture paths when moving the assets around into different folders. All paths resolve automatically without us having to do anything. With the Connor Browser, we had to make sure that every folder had its own text folder with all necessary textures in it. If we wanted to move assets to different folders, we would have to make sure to relink the texture paths to the new location. Now, none of that is needed. Once we drop in an asset, the texture paths are created and we can move the object or the textures around and everything will still load fine. Another great thing that comes with that ability is that assets now can share the same textures, so we don't have to duplicate the same texture over and over again. Which brings me to another really awesome feature. We now can easily find the dependencies of each asset. For example, we can easily see that these two objects are using the same texture if we go into the Dependencies tab. We can also check that the other way around. If we select the texture and go into the Dependence view, we can quickly see that two objects are using this texture. And since our structure is going to be a little bit more complex than this simple database, it's good to know that we can quickly find the location of the texture by right-clicking and opening the file into a new browser window. So we get to keep the main asset window intact and we don't have to lose track of our main objective by jumping into new hierarchies. Of course, the dependencies workflow applies to all files and not just textures. So if, for example, we have a scene that uses sound samples, we can find them here as well. It's a great way to debug scenes and make sure that everything needed is there. The even cooler thing is that if by chance we get to delete a texture or other type of asset used by an object, we can instantly get some valuable feedback about it. 
So if we go into the incomplete assets folder, we will see all the assets that need fixing and we can also see the name of the missing asset. This will be incredibly helpful when creating and maintaining your databases. And here's my last tip. If for some reason we need to dig into a database and grab a file, there's a better way than just going into each folder and trying to find the file. Here it's easy because it's just a couple of objects, but if you had hundreds of assets, it would be quite difficult to do. This is where the ID of the asset comes in play. So if we click the copy ID to clipboard, we can then go into the finder window or the Windows Explorer window and just type in the number. The correct asset will show up and then it's just a matter of going into the folder and getting the file. There's a lot of other cool things you can do with a browser, but I think I covered the most important ones. If though you would like to see more, just let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to prepare another video. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.